you all for coming to watch. Uh, first, I'd like to tell you some about fly eyes. Um, so in that bottom image there, if you make my image big, you can see my friend at one of the museum's exhibits that we call the arthropod zoo. Uh, you can experience there what it's like to see through the eyes of an insect. It's pretty cool and I think you should go check it out sometime if you get the chance. Uh, you can also explore the arthropod zoo online uh, through a virtual tour. So you know how flies are super good at dodging things? Well, surely they must have amazing vision, right? In a way they do, but in other ways, human vision is kind of better. Flies have lots and lots of tiny lenses in each eye. See that really big image of a fly on my screen? Type in the chat your guess of how many lenses you think that fly has. Is it seven? Is it 7,000? If you have any guess of how many lenses that fly has, put it in the chat. All right, I am not seeing, oh, okay. Oh, Miranda thinks 2,500. Azur says 8,000 and Adam says a million. Those are all um, awesome guesses. It's, it's hard to know what, how many that exact fly has. So your guess could be how many that fly has, but most flies have about 4,000 lenses in each eye. Man, I'm loving your guys' guesses, great job. So in that picture there, we can, can you see each little tiny lens? Each lens there sees a separate image, and we call this a compound lens. This allows flies to be really good at detecting motion, but they aren't as good as seeing far off detail like us. So today, for our craft, we're going to be making our own pair of fly eyes. Here you can see two of me holding what we're going to make today. So we're going to make these little bubble wrap eyes that kind of look like the compound eye of a fly. So each little bubble is like a little lens, but you can count when you do it yourself, but I don't quite think there's 4,000 and that's okay, we're just pretending. Okay, so today we're gonna to be making our own pair of fly eyes. I'll be walking you through the steps, but it can take a while to cut and glue things. So here's what I'd like you to do. For now, just watch the process. If you want to start making the craft, that's totally fine, but I can't really tell what step everyone is on and I don't wanna rush your crafting. So for now, just watch me do it and ask any questions you have. After the program, we'll provide a recording of this Zoom and a PDF of instructions to help you make your own. So enjoy, and you can ask me and Laura Beth and any of the museum staff any questions you have. Okay, are we ready to get started? Awesome. So I'm gonna switch to this view where I can see my hands and we can see what we're doing. So the first step is just to get your materials together. You can see kind of over here that I have my materials all together. Um, and if you don't have the exact same materials, that's totally fine. So first we're gonna use our paper plates to trace circles around the bubble wrap that you have. So see how I've already traced that circle? So you're gonna trace it around the bubble wrap and then you're just gonna cut the bubble wrap out. Bubble wrap can be kind of tricky to cut. So don't worry if it's not perfect or if you need to tear some things, that's totally fine. And we always recommend reusing old bubble wrap because you can get some use out of bubble wrap before you cut it up and make your pair of fly eyes. I was gonna say, that's such a good way to recycle. Yeah, so you can use it to keep your shipment safe and then you can make some cool fly eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so after we do that, and we have two pairs of fly eyes. You're gonna cut out two bubble wrap pieces. Then we're gonna cut out our paper plates. My paper plates are kind of small and I find that that kind of you know, fits my face, but whatever you have is totally fine. And you're gonna draw a big circle on your plate. My plate, as you can see, kind of already had a, a, a circle on there. So we're just gonna be following that. One tip that I have for uh, cutting this out, because it can be kind of tricky and you might want an adult's help, but you can punch a hole in your plate and then that'll make it super easy to get started cutting. So then once you've got it started, you can just keep cutting all the way around your plate. And Abby, we have a question from the chat. Eliana wants to know, can we use different types of wrap? That is a great question and you certainly can. This is whatever I had that came in a package I got. The bubbles are really small. But if they're bigger, that's totally fine. Like I said, different flies have different numbers of lenses, so that's totally cool. Good question. 
So now that we have, we're going to cut out two paper plates and we're going to cut out two bubble wraps. So once we have that ready, we can go on to our next step. So now you have two paper plates that are cut out. This I think is the hardest step, but it's not that bad. You're going to hold your paper plates together like this and you're going to punch two holes. One hole is going to be right there and one hole is going to be right there. They're going to go through both plates. So you'd punch it like that and you'd punch it over here too. And once you have those holes punched, what will happen is you, when you pinch that together, you can kind of see how the plates fit together on a curve like that. And that's really good because it makes it super easy for our next step where we're putting a pencil through. So to put the pencil through, you're just gonna go through one hole. Here's what it looks like on the other side. You're going, oh, <laughs> that's what it looks like on the other side. You're putting it through one of the holes and you're finishing it off through the other hole. And what will happen there is the pencil holds it really nice and tightly. Can you kind of see that? Yep. So what we're going to do here is this is going to be what holds the fly, uh, the fly mask. And the pencil is nice because it's kind of longer than my plate, which makes it look like it have a really long proboscis. And that's great because today is Mosquito Monday. We're talking about mosquitoes. So in the chat, I'd like you to say what your favorite type of fly is. We've got lots of different types of flies that we'll be learning about this week. Oh, Carrie says it's a robber fly. Ooh, I love robber flies. We've got a house fly. Oh, tiger bee fly. It's got Ooh. a cool name. And just so everybody knows, Abby mentioned proboscis. And in case you don't know what that word means, that is the um, sort of like the tongue or just the mouth parts of a fly. Oh, Emery loves all flies. Kelly loves dragonflies. And oh, this is a first. We have a, a participant who loves mosquitoes. So well, Trey. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, today is Mosquito uh, Monday. So uh, whoever it was that said their favorite was mosquitoes, a big thumbs up. But we love all flies here at the museum. So that's great. Good answers. Thumbs up to Trey. So after we finish that step, we can move on to our next step. In this part, we're just going to glue or tape the bubble wrap on to represent our fly lenses. So over here, I've already got these two taped out. Um, but like I said, you can use tape, you can use glue, this part's okay. And this is another reason why it's, it's not that bad to do a, a bad cutting job, no pressure there. Because if it's too small or if it has some straight lines on it that look kind of weird, these are going on the inside of the mask. So you're putting it right there. So if you messed up, if you still have marker on it, if you know you use this bubble wrap again from a package you got and there's still tape on it, that's all fine. That's perfectly fine. Just want to put the other one on here. That's the kind of craft that uh, I can get behind. <laughs> the where you don't have awesome. to make a perfect circle. <laughs> exactly. Perfect circles are just difficult. Uh, but each of these bubble wraps is a little perfect circle. And another added bonus of doing this craft is that you get to pop lots of bubble wrap. That's always fun. So you can get a nice stress reliever while you're making your fly eyes. So once we have that step finished and our lenses are in, we're starting to see it come together. Uh, and at this point, you can finish if you'd like, um, or you can add some antenna. So for one of the finished pairs that I made that I showed you earlier, I chose to make some pretty cool antenna out of sticks. So you don't really need some fancy equipment here. You can use sticks. You could probably use another pencil if you wanted or pipe cleaner, whatever that you had. I see my image is glitching. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like the fly. But those antenna look great. But that is the last step. So it's perfect time for my camera to start glitching. When you finish, <laughs> you have some pretty cool fly eyes that you can see on your face like that. And when you look through them, you might notice that everything's kind of fuzzy and far off. And again, that goes back to what I was saying about flies not being able to see distance very well. Um, really close up, they can see motion awesomely. 
But if they look uh, more than a few, you know, a few feet or meters out, it looks kind of fuzzy to them. So that's another cool thing about doing this craft is that it looks fuzzy to you too. And you can see some shape and you can probably see some movement, but that's about it, so. <laughs> that's cool. I didn't know that flies are sort of um, nearsighted, right? That they can see things. That's a good way to describe it. <laughs> I always get them backwards, the nearsighted and farsighted, but yeah. So let me drop in the chat the instructions for this craft. And if anyone has any questions, Feel free to ask me or Laura Beth. Yeah, I think we should check in with everyone and see how your fly eyes are coming along. Is anybody finished or saving the craft for later? Hopefully we got some who are following along. And if so, you should tell us what you see. Yeah, and I encourage you guys, if you'd prefer to always do it later because we will have the video ready for recording tomorrow. Um, as soon as tomorrow, we're not entirely sure about that. Um, ooh, some future fly costumes for Halloween would be pretty cool. <laughs> you could even make yourself a nice coronavirus mask with a little fly face on it and wear your eyes. <laughs> so you have some people who are still decorating. I am curious what you're decorating with. Abby, what would you decorate your fly eyes with if you could add some Pizzazz. That's a great question. So you could really do anything. If you had some stickers, you could do some stickers. Um, you could also just draw on your plates because usually the back of paper plates kind of feel like paper. They're easy to draw on. So you can just draw a nice little, this is me drawing, writing really fast, a nice little bug fest. I think it's backwards for you, but that's okay. It is. <laughs> I'm glad you told me what that was. Yeah, <laughs> it's taking you me a minute to figure out. <laughs> so you can decorate it with words that say bug fest or whatever you'd like. You can write your name on it. That is really fun. Um, Adam has a question. What does the peacock fly use its wings for? Intimidation or attracting mates? That is a really good question and I do not know the answer to. Uh, <laughs> but Laura, Beth, and I can maybe help you figure that out with the help of a handy dandy Google search engine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I do not know the answer to that one. Yeah, while we're figuring that out, I will let you know my favorite housefly fun fact because, you know, we had several people who said that the housefly was their favorite. And so my favorite fun fact is that houseflies taste with their feet and they are 10 million times more sensitive to sugar, to the taste of sugar than humans are, which is crazy. I can't even imagine. That is crazy. I'm sure we got a lot of sugar lovers out there. And also in looking up uh, fly eyes, I saw where they see color differently than we do too. Um, so, you know, we see all sorts of colors, but the flies have less uh, photo receptors. They can't see color as well. See that I'm glitching. Um, so they can't see photo, they can't see colors as well. So they can't even see the color red, uh, which is one of my favorite colors. So that makes me sad. But they can still see motion really well, which is what they need to survive. So that's fine. <laughs> and do you know um, if flies can see colors in the ultraviolet spectrum? Like I know some other insects can. Good question. I think, I know that some can. I know that fruit flies especially can see UV light, um, but I'm not entirely sure about all flies. That's a really good question. Um, we have another question from Mary. Can a fly attack? That's a good question. It depends on what you mean by attack. So like mosquitoes, I like to think of sometimes as them attacking me because they really like me. Um, so sometimes, uh, flies will use humans for their food or for different reasons. Um, and you might see that as an attack. Sometimes we don't notice, so it's not that bad of an attack. But really good question. Okay, and I think I have the answer for our peacock fly. Um, it seems like they use their wings um, more to defend themselves as, as an intimidation measure. So they, if they have, you know, if an animal has fake eye spots on its body, then it's often meant to look like some kind of scary predator. That's so really cool. That is what 
entomologists believe. Maybe you can draw some scary dots on your fly eyes. You can get some big, <laughs> uh, draw some big polka dots on there and scare away any other flies. Um, and Martha points out that robber flies will ambush other bugs to eat. So they definitely will attack other bugs, but not people. That's a really good point. Um, I took the question, of course, is attacking people. Um, but flies have to eat too, so they probably attack whatever they eat. Yeah. Oh, and Martha also pointed out earlier that you can put a little feather on one of your antenna to make the arista, which is a, um, a body part that is sometimes on the antenna of like some species of flies. I love that. That's such a cool idea. <laughs> I did not have any flies at my, at any feathers at my disposal. Does anyone ha else have any cool ideas of what to do for antenna? I do not. I too sometimes attack but, um, ice cream. Well, pipe cleaners, oh, springs, that's a good call, or um, metal, metal wiring maybe? Oh yeah, you can make some really little ones with paper clips. Mm -hmm. We should see how diverse we can make our, our flies. We each make fly. Big leaves, I love that, I love that. Yeah, when I got my sticks, I kind of just walked outside and was like, I don't have anything to make antennas, so I'll grab these sticks because they look cool. So you can really try anything. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Ooh, they, you like the sticks? I like the sticks too. I liked how they curved. It's pretty cool. Well, that is all the instruction that I have for this craft. If you, ooh, ooh we got one more question. Oh. Oh yeah, Adam, um, are crane flies true flies or are they misnamed? They are in fact true flies. And um, we've also had a lot of people asking how, um, or asking if crane flies are mosquitoes and they are not the same as mosquitoes. In fact, they don't even drink blood like mosquitoes. Often the adults don't eat anything at all, let alone blood. Well, that is very interesting. Um, yeah. Good question. And how many wings do they have? Abby, most true flies, they have two wings. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. Or all true flies. Yeah. All right. Well, um, continue to submit questions if you have them. And if we run out of time, we can always answer them in email. Um, if you loved this craft, you should also try to make some chalk art. And you can submit that to our BugFest team. And those instructions are on the website, um, bugfest.org. And if you are so inclined, you can also donate, um, donate, or you can purchase a t-shirt. Um, and you can get a free t-shirt, BugFest t-shirt, when you join or renew your museum membership. So if you want to rock a t-shirt just like all of our BugFest crew, then you can do that. Thank you so much for attending everyone. I hope everyone has a great night and um, send us your chalk art pictures and your bug fest fly eye pictures. Thank as you well. for coming and thank you for making a craft along with me. It was a lot of fun. <laughs>